going on everybody? My name is Joel here at Tangent Innovations. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Um, today uh, I'm just gonna go over uh, a few parts that you need to make this install work. Um, you know, the E63 brake booster on the E30. I know you've probably, I mean, if you're watching this video, you've probably heard or done it yourself. Uh, other options out there in terms of brake boosters for the E30 and the swap. So um, I believe this this booster is a pretty straightforward install. You barely have to do any modifications to the uh, car itself or the booster itself. So uh, I'm gonna go over you know what parts do you need, what modifications you need, if any, uh, and just a basic rundown on how to get this thing working on your car. So uh, stay tuned and uh, let's go. So here are the basic parts you need for uh, this. Uh, so it's installed so uh, right here we got two brake boosters we got an E30 IX brake booster which is a very common brake booster used in the E30 platform and here we have an E63 brake booster which uh, I'm gonna be going over on the install so uh, there's a few things here you need to install um, just basic um, you know, a piece of uh, an adapter here and I'm just gonna go over what some of these things mean. So uh, you will need this piece. Uh, this piece just basically spaces out the booster from the uh, from the brake pedal. So uh, I mean, honestly, when we put this thing in first without no adapter, it was really close. The only problem was that your brake switch was being jammed because it was sitting too close to the to the brake pedal. So we needed to space it out. So this was, uh, we made this, which spaced it out just perfect. Um, this will be uh, available for you guys to uh, 3D print or CNC yourself, or you can buy it from us uh, when we put it up on our website, but we will have the free 3D file so you guys can have this piece. So uh, just it's just the basic, same bolt pattern. Um, the only difference is um, the E63 brake boosters doesn't have doesn't have four studs instead it has two studs and then it has these kind of nubs on the opposite ends so this adapter accommodates uh, you know accommodates those studs for you to just slide it in place and make it work so here we have you just got to make sure everything's aligned so you know just put it in there and jam it in well not jam it in it just snaps on and like that, you'll be able to uh, uh, space out your brake pedal on, uh, on, you know, when, when you install it. So that's the only thing. You don't need to drill anything. This just bolts up to the OEM E30 um, uh, booster. So there's no drilling and no, no spacing of anything. So you just install this and just put it right in. Um, the next thing we have here is, so the E63, oops, a little bit of a fluid there so the e63 comes uh, with m12 by one uh, uh, fittings for your brake lines so we have these uh, adapters that convert it from your m12 to your m10 by ones which is the only me 30 brake uh, fitting size so all you have to do is just slide this in here and um, your OEM E30 uh, brake lines would go right in here. That's it. So that's all you need to do on the master cylinder side. Um, besides that, uh, for your for your vacuum here, you can easily route that. There's many ways to route this wherever you want it. Um, another thing is uh, these are the two pins. So this is our OEM E30 pin, and this is the E63 pin. Um, the OEM E30 pin will not work. Um, you will need if you, when you buy this booster, you will need to buy it with the pin. Um, it's also a better pin because it kind of clamps on to the pedal uh, instead of having a pin on the side like the OEM E30s. So just make sure when you buy this booster, you buy the pin as well. If you do not have this pin, it will not work. Uh, it doesn't reach. As you can see here, it doesn't reach the other side of the uh, of the cleavage here. So you will not have anything attaching this uh, to your brake pedal. So just make sure your 
you buy this pin when you buy your uh, booster. Uh, but besides that, I mean, it's pretty forward straight up, uh, you know, install. You put it in, uh, tighten up your bolts, um, you put your lines in, and um, you should be on your way. So uh, uh, stay tuned. Uh, next, we're going to just go ahead and install this on our E30, and uh, we'll see what we come across. So here we are guys, we're ready to install this, uh, this booster into our E30. Um, as you can see, I already uh, uninstalled my previous uh, booster, so everything's all nice and clean. Um, one thing uh, to notice here, uh, this car is set up with uh, S54 ITVs, so it was a lot easier to uh, extract the booster out of here. Um, most of you guys, I'm assuming, will have either uh, the M50 manifold or the uh, S52 manifold so it might be a little bit tighter in the area but um, this booster is actually the exact same dimensions as the uh, as uh, 325iX uh, actually it's a, it's, it's a bit shorter in length but in terms of width it's about the same so um, yeah so it's, it's ready to go um, Right here, I got my uh, adapter uh, boosters. Right here, uh, we picked up this booster. It was used from a from a junkyard. Uh, it, it was it was in good shape. So uh, it came it came with the master cylinder. Um, it came with the with the pin. Um, so it was ready to go. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna well I'm gonna slide this adapter into here. Just make sure you line it up correctly because you have uh, two different sizes here. So this just goes and snaps into place like this. So once it's in there, um, yeah, you're ready to go. So all you have to do is, uh, so since I have this uh, uh, fuel pressure regulator here, I have some lines in the way. So you'll kind of see me just kind of tweaking some lines out the way just so I won't pinch it with the booster. So you can just go ahead and uh, kind of just line it in and um, drop it in. You don't have to drill anything, it'll just slide right into the uh, into the uh, holes as the uh, original mounts. So you don't have to worry about drilling or anything like that. So one thing to notice though is be careful when you slide it in. Uh, you just want to make sure that your brake pedal kind of uh, a lever is in hand with your previous here so you can slide the pin in um, but besides that you just drop it in there and um, yeah so now we're ready to go on the uh, on the driver's side and bolt this thing up all right guys so we're on to the next step um, probably the hardest part of this swap is going to be actually it's not really that hard so you uh, are, are gonna keep the OEM lines the only thing is you're gonna have to massage them a little bit you can do it by hand I, I mean I did this by hand um, just massage them a little bit since this uh, this master cylinder um, the angles of where the fittings go are a little bit different than the uh, original brake booster gonna have to kind of massage them in a, you know in a different way so you can kind of squeeze them in there behind the um, behind the tower and um, you know uh, kind of just tie tie them up uh, in, in, in the specific angle in which the uh, fins go so that's probably kind of kind of the pain in the ass thing of this swap 
So right now, I'm gonna just move this out the way. Um, these are our M12 by one to M10 by one adapters. Uh, we'll, we'll, we will have these in our website too. So um, if you wanna get these, you'll be able to purchase them from us. So all you have to do now is just kind of screw this into the uh, into your master cylinder here and screw the other one into this port there you go so now you just want to kind of just mock up um, your lines I suggest start with the real line first since that's the most difficult so you're just gonna go ahead and kind of just mock it in um, in place um, like I said you're gonna have to massage these a little bit just so you can get them in um, just work your way around the tower it's gonna be a tight fit but you'll be able to make it work trust me so once you get them lined up you should be fine so that's uh this is what my brake light ended up being after I kind of just massaged it a little bit and um, you know try to line it up with the with the fitting in the back. So after you all set done, you know finessing with your lines, you're gonna go ahead and just just put it snug in there. You can get your wrench here and just tighten it up all the way. You want to keep everything loose. You want to keep even your adapter loose here in the rear, just because you don't know if you need to adjust anything. So after you're done with that, just tighten it up as best you can. Try not to, uh, if you see it's not a line and, it, and, and the fitting is slipping, uh, just you know, take your time and try not to strip the fitting because that might be a little problem. So if you do that, you're gonna have to, you know, cut the line and re-flare it again, you know, with the bubble flare and all that stuff. So you don't want that. So just make sure you take your time and, um, just try to get it in there as best you can and then you know just give it a little snug at the end and then we'll tighten that guy at the end so now for your front line so just move this out the way so your front line so you're gonna go ahead and install your front line fitting so you're gonna go ahead and snap this baby in here tighten it up I'm just gonna put it in here snug and this fitting, as you can see here, and it's a little bit of angle, so all you have to do is just, you know, take your hand, kind of line it up with the fitting here. You know, you're gonna have to do a little bit of twisting of some of these lines, just some angle, tighten it up, and voila, you know? It's kind of that simple, and then you just have to play around, play around with the, um, trying to get it all lined up. Sometimes these things can be a little bit of hard to turn, so you might want to just give it a little wiggle just to break it in there. It might just be rusted in the middle. So just kind of spin it around, break it loose. Okay, so once you have that done, go ahead and slide it in there and just kind of, you know, just try to get the initial threads going you don't want to uh, you don't want to just shove it in there so just trying to get the initial threads going once you once you get the feel of all the threads going there it is once you get the feel of the threads going that's all you need so then I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it up oops slip back out so you're gonna go ahead get this baby aligned again Looks like we're gonna need to extend this a little bit. 
kind of push it in to get more clearance. I think that's in. Let's give it a shot. Tighten it in. This time, ah, come on. You know what the problem is? This thing's just gonna hit it with a little bit of WD. It's just so freaking so hard to move. There you go, you see it's fucking it's a bunch of shit in there, so that's why it's so hard to get the threads going. So once I spray that, I think that worked out a little bit better. Alright, so here we go, boom. So yeah, just make sure your, your fittings are clean. Hit them with some WD-40 just so you can get, you know, just so you can get the initial threads going. Because what was happening there was, I thought I had it, but it was only in there. So I couldn't get the, you know, the first couple of turns in so it can catch. So it wasn't catching anything. So after I hit it with a WD-40, I was able to uh, get those threads going in back again. So same procedure like in the rear. You know, let's go ahead and tighten it up. The fittings here. You should get one of these wrenches if you don't have one. They're pretty handy uh, when it comes to brake lines. So this 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 wrench is, is specific for brake line fittings. So it makes it a lot easier so it won't slip. Boom. So now you want to go ahead and uh, tighten up your main adapters here. Just give it a, now that you have all of them snugged in, just give it a little snug. So just, just to make sure you don't have any leaks. And that should do it. So now you're wondering, wait, wait a minute, E63. That wasn't a manual car, so where the hell is the, the clutch uh, reservoir? So you see this nipple here. This nipple uh, was actually, they, they made it at the factory. Uh, so if your car was automatic, they just capped it. Um, so, but you still have the nipple there. So uh, what we only have to do here is just cut that little, kind of um, has a little uh, casting uh, seal there. So all you have to do is kind of just slide that or slip that open with a with a blade, and we should be able to connect our um, uh, clutch uh, slave uh, line there. And there you go, you have your clutch uh, fluid. So all you need is a plain old blade, and kind of just boop. Look how easy was that. Here's the uh, little nipple that came from factory. So all the master cylinders that were on, ad on automatic cars had this nipple. So this obviously is a manual car. So we're gonna cut the nipple away. You know, just trying to make it clean around the edges. Make sure everything's tidy. So now technically, this should just lie right in. Nice, snug fit. I have this clamp here. You know, it's 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 almost like it was made for this. So, have this nice snug fitting here. And um, I don't. I, I honestly think you don't even need this this clamp. I just have it here as a safety measure. 
so uh, it fits so good in this nipple that I, I, I honestly just have this because I had it in my previous booster. You don't, I don't think you actually need it. So tighten that down, and um, you know, for me, it's actually pretty simple uh, to route this, as uh, as I already have an uh, ITB setup. So this uh, vacuum uh, line here is gonna be, you know, you can set it up any way you want. Uh, there's many ways to route it. You can buy, you know, fittings, 90 degree fittings, and all that stuff. So it should it should be fairly easy uh, hooking this thing up. This right here, the lines and the, the bracket in the back. Uh, those were the main, uh, uh, not complications, but kind of roadblocks that we had to figure out. So there it is.